Thanks. Okay. Um, thank you very much for joining. Um, just to let you know the process of how this is going to work, um, I'm shortly going to hand over to my colleagues, but before we do that, if you have any technical issues, please put it in the chat down here. So if there's anything wrong with the audio or the video, or you've got some kind of issue technically, please let us know and I'll be able to deal with that. I'm also on email in the background, so you can always contact me that way if you're having any kind of difficulties. Um, because this is, because of the, the format of this session, it's a discussion, so please put your questions as we're going along. But if you could use the Q&A box, it makes it much easier for us to answer them. Um, we might want to answer it in chat or, uh, you know, if we need to send you a link or something. So please put your questions in the chat box, it's, box, it's really helpful. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Dr. Petra Hanger. I am here in the background um, if you've got any technical queries, but uh, for now, over to you, Petra. Okay, thank you, Kim. Um, hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me properly <laughs> and there are no issues. Um, good. Um, so uh, you've already had a little bit of an introduction from Kim on the logistics. Um, so we'll, we'll keep the same logistics. Um, before we dive in, I would like to start with a bit of a round the table introduction. Um, so um, Gary, would you like to go first? Um, and then Dan, and then I, I can say a little bit about myself as well. You're muted, Gary. <laughs> Sorry, these schoolboys errors, even after two, two years of, of online delivery. Um, so welcome, everybody. My name is, is Gary Lai. I'm um, Professor of Biochemical Engineering. Um, I'm head of the Department of Biochemical Engineering, which I always think is a, a great pleasure, um, a, a, an honour to lead the department. Um, and I'm also the, the director of our Centre for Doctoral Training in, in Biochemical Engineering and Bioprocessing. Uh, so I'll pass over to my my colleagues to introduce themselves. Thanks, Gary. Um, my name's Professor Dan Bracewell. Um, I'm a professor in bioprocess analysis um, I'm based in the Department of Biochem Biochemical Engineering. Um, that means uh, I run a group of researchers here. Um, we focus a lot on uh, purification uh, of biological molecules, particularly things like viruses and uh, proteins that are going to be used for therapeutic purposes. Um, I'm also the postgraduate research admissions tutor, um, and so that means I'm involved in the uh, admission of PhD and engineering doctorate students uh, into our research programs uh, within the department. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Gary. Thank you so much, Dan. Um, so I'll go on and introduce myself now. Um, I am Dr. Petra Hanga. Um, I am a lecturer in biochemical engineering um, in the uh, Department of Biochemical Engineering. Um, I actually only joined uh, last year in September, so I'm quite new to the department, um, but it's a fantastic um, department and I feel like I fit in like a glove. <laughs> I am a biochemical engineer by training as well, so this is literally right up my, uh, my alley. Um, the same as, as Gary and Dan, um, I'm also involved in research within the department. Uh, my research is, um, is all about bioprocessing of stem cells for different applications. Um, I initially started um, doing this for cell therapy production, but then for about four years now, um, I, I started applying the same skills in a completely different application, which is food related um, in the production of cultivated meat. Um, so, um, you know, hopefully this does, does um, uh, suggest to all of you that there's, there's quite a lot of vers uh, versatility in terms of the applications and the type of um, uh, research that we can do as biochemical engineers. Um, good, so now that we've done um, a bit of round the table um, introduction, um, I would like to interact a little bit with you, with the audience. So um, if you bear with me, I will share my screen um, as we will do two very quick, very short uh, polls, um, and I will explain how it works. Okay, so just bear with me one second while I share my screen, hopefully no technical issues. Um, good, and if you could 
let me know if you can see this just one second so that i can make it full screen okay uh gary maybe you can i can see you so maybe okay good so all good so the way this works is um if you have a phone nearby, uh, you can download the VVOX app and by using the ID 153165521, um, my question for you is in one word, if you are thinking about two words, if you write them together, that, that will go through as, as uh, uh, one word. In what industries do you think biochemical engineers can work in? Okay, and I will give you one minute or so. If you don't want to download the app as well, or you don't have a phone nearby, the other option is that you write your answers, your one word in the chat. Yeah, um, so if you use the chat function, that would be great. And I'll give you a few minutes to do this. Okay, so we, we have one answer in, <laughs> or at least one person that's registered, good. Okay, so I can't... Oh yes, I can see the chat. Oh yes, there we go. So there are quite a few coming in through the chat as well. Good. Okay, so I think I'm, yeah, good. We're still getting in answers. Okay, we'll just keep this open for a few, well, 30 seconds more. Right, and then I'm gonna stop it. So if you if you still want to input your answer, please go ahead and do so now. Okay, good. Right, so I'm gonna stop this poll now. Good. Okay. So some of the answers I'm trying to keep both the um, chat and the answers from the Vox. Um, so medical, algae, vaccines, energy, biofuels, gene therapy, and then in the chat, we also have pharmaceuticals, right, foods, minerals, academia <laughs> as well. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you can say academia is, <laughs> is um, well, not, I wouldn't say an industry necessarily, but it does, <laughs> it's a good, it's a good one though. I mean, a lot of biochemical engineers do go into academia, which, you know, we, uh, myself, Gary and Dan, we're, <laughs> we're all doing that. But I think what, what also needs mentioning is that for us, those biochemical engineers that have chosen academia, we are working very, very closely with the industry as well. Um, so a lot of the projects, as you know, Gary can tell you later on, um, have been designed and done as well, have been designed together with academia, with industry um, to target different challenges that the industry is facing that us as biochemical engineers can um, solve. Good. So these are um, very, very good applications. I think some that might be missing from there is also petroleum, I guess that, that yeah, kind of goes into, well, biofuels, fuels. Um, um, yeah, um, cell therapies as well, um, tissue engineering, those sorts of applications, um, us as biochemical engineers can also contribute to those as well. Good, okay, so that was the first question. Uh, we'll do the same thing for the second question. So if I start, good. Um, 
the same in one word. How do you think biochemical engineers have contributed to the fight to fight the COVID-19 pandemic? So again, I'll, I'll give you a couple of minutes to set up and input your answers. And again, if uh, um, you can use the chat, if the chat function, if you don't want to uh, download the VVOX app. Okay, good. So I think we've um, we've got quite a few answers in the chat, and then um, also some have come through through uh, VVox. So I will stop the poll now. Okay, good. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you can see this uh, research vaccine distribution. Um, the majority of you have said manufacture, yeah, which is, um, I guess, is one of the obvious ones, but one of the very, very important ones for our role as biochemical engineers, um, antigen, pharma, vaccine discovery, making vaccines, and then in the chat, we've also got manufacturing, vaccine production, uh, drugs. Good. So you are all absolutely right. Um, I think it's... Um, the manufacturing side of things um, is one of the biggest ones, um, but what we, um, um, but um, Professor Gary Lai can actually tell you a bit more about this, um, as very recently he has worked with the ICME um, to produce a, um, a short movie that we will play a bit later on, um, but I guess in the meantime, Gary, maybe you can um, summarize some of those uh, contributions. Um, the video was about um, our UCL in biochemical engineering alumni um, and how they have contributed uh, towards the production of uh, vaccines for COVID. Um, Gary, over to you. I will stop sharing my screen now. Okay, hopefully this was a, um, a useful short <laughs> Uh, interactive exercise um, to see where uh, your thoughts are um, on this. But over to you, Gary. Okay, uh, thanks, Petra. Um, I think just commenting on some of those those answers, I think certainly all the industry areas were, were very typical of where our graduates um, go into. Um, you know, as, as head of department, one of the things I look at is, you know, what are the skill, what, you know, where are their skills needs, where are the job opportunities for our graduates at all levels. Um, and we see that um, the vast majority of our uh, graduates quickly progress to careers in industry or go on to academic research. I put the academia answer in, by the way, I thought I would contribute. Um, but um, uh, yeah, our graduates go on onto a, a, a wide range of, of skills. They're very much in demand because of their engineering skills, and they go into a real range of, of jobs. Um, I think the ones that, that weren't in, picked up in, in that sort of short summary was things like um, management and finance and investment, um, increasingly things like data analysis and strategic analysis of sectors. Um, these are uh, our graduates have skills for working in all these different types of areas. OK, so um, in terms of the, the question that Petra asked, which, which was really about what are the roles um, of biochemical engineers and UCL biochemical engineering graduates in particular during the COVID pandemic, um, it's really very much uh, within that sort of development and manufacture and distribution of making these sort of va vaccines available to the patients that, that really need them. Um, 
So this year was, was very interesting. It's uh, our professional body is the Institution of, of Chemical Engineers. It's their centenary. Um, and together we, we help make a video talking about the impact of chemical and biochemical engineers across a range of different sectors. So the, the, the little clip from that we'll show you later is specifically the role of, of some of our alumni in the COVID-19 response. Um, just to, to pick out um, the, the, the sort of three key people um, in that role. Um, so one of the things we, we have in, in our, our research activities, we have a collaborative um, activity with the Jenner Institute at the University of Oxford, where obviously the, the Chadox vaccine, that's the basis of the AstraZeneca uh, product um, it was developed. Um, and that, that's called the Future Vaccine Manufacturing Research Hub. And so together with my colleague, Martina Micheletti and Sarah Gilbert from Oxford, they, they direct that. Um, and we clearly have been very heavily involved over the last eight, 18 months or so in the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the response was phenomenal. I think it's, it was the quickest time that a vaccine had ever progressed from discovery through to uh, clinical development, uh, clinical approval, and then manufacture and distribution. And three of our uh, alumni were very much at the center of, of that process. So the first person that's covered in the video is um, a person called Richard Tarrant. Um, actually, I think he did his PhD with uh, Dan Bracewell uh, a number of years ago. Um, and he, he works in the clinical biomanufacturing facility at Oxford, where they made the first batch of the vaccine that went into human clinical trials. So you probably saw on TV the first lady, the first patient to receive the, the, the vaccine. Um, and Richard was effectively the person who had overseen that manufacturing process and signed it off as okay to go into human clinical trials. So that side of, of development and quality control is certainly one of the areas that our graduates go into. As the results of those clinical trials came in and it, it was proven to be safe um, and effective, the process then had to be scaled up. And in the video, we focused on another of our graduates, uh, a lady called Carol Nevelman, who works at a company called Oxford Biomedica. And they work together with Oxford and, and AstraZeneca really to kind of optimize and scale up the process. Um, and that was very much Carol's role um, in this, this development um, of the, COVID, the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. And there's really some really novel challenges there of, you know, in the pandemic situation, you want to make a lot of this vaccine very quickly in lots of different facilities around the world to make a product that's actually of the same quality and effectiveness. And so Carol's role was about doing the engineering characterization and development of that um, manufacturing process. And then the final person that, that we highlighted was uh, a person called uh, Mark Proctor. Um, and he is actually uh, in charge of supply chains within AstraZeneca. So his role was really to coordinate the final commercial manufacture of the vaccine, um, not just within the UK, but at all these approved manufacturing sites around the world. Um, and so this, this was really important for, for two reasons. The, the obvious one was very much about how you can make these vaccines quickly under pandemic conditions and get them to the patient who needs them so that we, we have the protection. But the second issue was also around the idea of, of, of sustainability and environmental impact. So, so normally you would make these vaccines at a single site and then ship them around the world, which has all the sort of environmental impact associated with transport and CO2 evolution and impact on the, uh, on the environment. Whereas this new approach of, of doing this distributed manufacture at lots of facilities around the world where you manufactured the vaccine close to the patients who need it, um, that was what the role that the, the Mark um, worked in. And I think when we made the video, I quoted that um, 
they'd now made something like 3 billion doses of this vaccine within a record time in something like 151 different countries. And I think that was just a, a phenomenal achievement. And I'm, I'm very glad um, that it, uh, our alumni were very much at the center uh, of that COVID-19 response. Um, that, that is very impressive, Gary. I mean, these are facts that I wasn't quite aware of. So I, I, I would like to say that it's, it's very, very impressive. Um, I mean, these, these are very um, complex applications. And even with just thinking about COVID, I mean, the, the type of skills that are required to be able to even tackle uh, the challenges of these applications, and particularly in a pandemic where, you know, we, were, uh, we had the time pressure to get this out. Um, what, what is uh, the department doing in terms of getting our graduates with those type of skills that are needed? Yeah. Maybe you can give um, an overview of the type of programs that are available? Sure. Um, so in terms of the, the programs, um, the sort of postgraduate level, we, we have a number of... So, so by the time people have gone through their first degrees, they've, they've got an understanding of a specialist understanding of a particular area, whether it's more from a bioscience background or whether it's more from an engineering background. Um, what we offer within the department are a range of masters and doctoral level programs that really um, try to go uh, focus on particular skills or specialisations that the students who come into the department want to, to explore at the next stage in their academic career. Um, so each is designed to provide specialist skills, um, but also to equip people with the skills to go on to the, the next stage in their, in their careers. Um, so if I just run through the, the um, programmes, um, the first one we have is the MSc in Biochemical Engineering, which Better as, as a program director, you obviously. I fully you know. realize I forgot to mention that. <laughs> uh, you're, you're, you're the, uh, you know, uh, more about it um, already. Um, but the, the MSc in biochemical engineering um, is really focusing on meeting a perceived skills demand or a real skills demand in industry for people with bioprocessing and, 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 and uh, general process engineering skills. And we offer, we offer effectively two versions of, of this uh, MSc. One is really for people from a, a, a science background who want to pick up those engineering and design skills, um, perhaps to go on more into sort of uh, uh, careers as, as engineers. Um, and the second one is really for people who are coming from engineering backgrounds already, but perhaps they're coming from chemical or general process engineering backgrounds and want to pick up more biochemical engineering skills, understand the bioscience and the life science a bit more to go on to careers in, for example, vaccine or pharmaceutical manufacturing. So that's, that is one of the programmes and that's accredited by our professional body and allows graduates to progress onto um, chartered engineer status. The second MSc uh, I will mention is our MSc in Cell and Gene Therapy. This is a, a new one that we launched two years ago. Um, and this is um, focused more on a specialist area of this emerging interest now in, in um, stem cell and gene therapies. Um, and so this focuses very much on um, the uh, commercialization and the manufacture of these advanced therapies, which have some really specific demands uh, or characteristics given the, the types of therapies they are and the markets and the, the diseases that they, they kind of treat. So this is, this is a MSc that's perhaps for people who really know what they want to do and go into that area and really specialize in those subjects. Um, underpinning a lot of what we do is the ability to actually engineer the cells that we work with, whether they're microbial cells or mammalian cells. Um, and this nowadays is, is given the terminology of synthetic biology or engineering biology. Um, and so in this area, we offer a program called the MRES in synthetic biology. So this is a master's of research. Um, and Darren Nesbeth, who's joined us, is the program director for, for that program. 
Um, and so this is for uh, very much of people who want to understand how we do the sort of genetic engineering of these, these systems, uh, but very much with a focus on how we can apply genetic engineering to enhance the performance and therefore make the products and the processes more environmentally friendly and more cost effective. And so really we offer these three master's programs that are tailored to individual needs. And then we also offer our doctoral programs, which uh, Dan Bracewell oversees for people who uh, want to go on to um, a sort of uh, doctoral level research programs. So hopefully that gave you an overview of the, the different programs that we that we have. And I know that later in the month we've got um, follow up sessions like this where we focus on individual uh, degree programs. Yeah. Thank you so much, Gary. Um, I think this this showcases the um, uh, the the range of different programs that we have, depending on what your needs are. Um, I mean, if if you are interested in a particular um, aspect um, of biochemical engineering, then perhaps uh, the cell and gene therapy masters is something that you would like to target, or the synthetic biology. But then, if it's more of a general um, Gen well, general interest in biochemical engineering with no specific, um, you don't know specifically at the end of it what you would what route you would like to take. I think the biochemical engineering uh, masters would be more appropriate for that. Um, I mean, all of them at the end, they will equip with various skills that are transferable and it's not just the knowledge and the depth of understanding, but you're also getting practical skills. Um, which have been designed and embedded in all of our um, diets and curriculums. Um, so um, yeah, I, I guess there's a lot of um, there's a lot of opportunity there as well, um, and also for uh, developing skills um, that can be used later on. Um, so I see Kim has posted in the chat the upcoming events, um, which are quite a few. Um, so these are particularly for uh, the individual programs uh, that you might you might have an interest in or you're trying to decide. Um, oh yes, you did post that one. So there will be one specifically on 10th of March with myself and Professor Dan Bracewell that will be addressing questions on the MSc in biochemical engineering. Um, and then on 3rd of March, there is one with uh, Dr. Kasim Rafik, who is the program director for the uh, manufacturing and commercialization of stem cell and gene therapy MSCs. Um, so if you have any questions specific on that, he, he can help shed some light on it. Um, and then uh, Darren and uh, Professor John Wood, they will be doing another one on uh, 15th of February. So not, not long <laughs> from now. Um, Good. So I guess um, going back to to some of those um, skills, Gary, maybe we can we can touch a bit more um, on that um, because um, I think there is um, perhaps you know when when people think about biochemical engineering, they think manufacturing or you know automatically manufacturing. But then as you as you touched on. Um, some of our uh, graduates have have gone on to different routes, still within you know uh, within uh, manufacturing, but more on things like um, logistics or logistical chain or the business side of things. Um, perhaps you you could um, you could give a few examples of some of our previous alumni. Um, just just to give an idea of, of uh, again, the versatility of, of these skills and of being a biochemical engineering in the end. Okay, sorry, I'm just checking, I'm not muted. Yeah, so, so I think um, if you take a, a sort of step back and say, what, what are the characteristics of people coming out of, of engineering degrees in, in general? Um, particularly if you compare them to more science-based degrees. Um, the thing that really characterizes our graduates is that they are, are both, they have quantitative skills, but they're also very good at problem solving. So in the sense of the way that we um, structure all our programs, whether undergraduate or, or, or postgraduate level, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, 
knowledge that's conveyed, but then there's a lot of practical application of how you take that knowledge and apply it to particular problems, either conceptually or experimentally at the lab bench or in the, in the pilot plant. And those, I think, are really key skills, the, the quantitative nature and the problem solving skills that allow our graduates to go on to, to jobs within a whole range of industries. The other, I think, thing that's really important are the transferable skills that our graduates get. So um, in all our programmes, they do a lot of, of teamwork. They, they learn to, to work together in, in design projects or in lab projects or in business plan projects. Um, and they work as a team, they do a lot of communication, they do a lot of, of presentation. And so these, again, are, are skills that are very much applicable across a whole range of different types of jobs. So, as I said, um, you know, practically all our graduates go on to, to relevant careers. Most of them go into sort of early stage development and manufacture of, of medicines, obviously a lot within the sort of pharma sector. Um, many progress on to sort of perhaps the more classical roles of engineers in terms of manufacturing, either whether they're on, on a plant somewhere or whether they are in the office where they're designing and developing and, and doing this sort of anal techno-economic analysis of those processes. But also a lot go on to, to other careers where perhaps they are more on the business side, where they're looking at investments in the, in the biotech sector and the life science sector, whether they're looking at strategic opportunities or whether they go really into the sort of more finance side and where they're actually looking at the, the investments and, and the management of those investments. Um, so those are kind of the three main areas that people go into, but um, we have lots of examples of other areas that people go in. So, so some people go into science communication, into technical journalism, some go on to, to teaching, um, and obviously a lot go on to, to research careers as well. So I think it's, um, if you take a step back from the actual title of any of our degree programmes and think about what are the core skills people get, then these are skills that are applicable across a wide range of sectors. And it, it ties in very much to the, the quiz you did at the beginning um, of all the different areas that, that people can go into. Yeah, thank you, Gary. Um, yeah, I think it's quite refreshing actually to see this, this wide range of applications um, and wide, wide range of, of routes that um, our graduates can, can take. Um, so um, this is for, for everyone in the audience. If you do have specific questions for any of us, please do post them in the, um, in the chat um, and I can ask them as, as they come through. Um, in the meantime, um, I, I would actually want, um, like to ask Dan something, <laughs> if that's all right. So you, you have been the program director for the um, MSc in biochemical engineering um, for, well, for a lot longer than I have. <laughs> um, so I was, I was wondering, in, in your experience, um, do, do our graduates from this program, do they tend to go uh, down a PhD route, or do they tend to go directly into um, into industry? Um, it's always been, I mean, as you, you flatteringly point out, <laughs> I, I've been doing this for uh, some time. Um, so it is interesting to look back at the, these sorts of statistics. Um, and you, you can see there's always been a, a split. Um, you know, the, the level where that split falls changes a little bit over the years, but certainly um, we always take, uh, as I already mentioned, I'm also the postgraduate research teacher, so we'll always take a number of MSCs are successful in their applications to, to some of our best projects. Um, so that happens every year. Um, others will go to, to other universities or, uh, or overseas uh, universities as well to do their PhDs, but that shouldn't mean you necessarily think of, well, I have to do a, a PhD to, to be a biochemical engineer. Uh, and I can point to many examples where people have very, very successful careers. Uh, I think one of the example that, that, that Gary 
pointed out, uh, Mark Proctor, I, I think he did his MEng and then went uh, did, has not done a PhD and obviously has, hmm. has now ascended to the very top of, uh, of his career. So um, it, you know, one has to look at where your career aspirations lie uh, and sort of make decisions accordingly. Uh, I think we can also say you know, the job market is exceptionally buoyant. I, I, so again, looking back at the, the period of time I've done this for, I cannot remember a time when the job market has been more buoyant and there's been more options. Mm. Um, and, and, and you working in the area of stem cells, Petra will be very well aware of you know, some things driving this, such as the cultured meat area, creating yeah. lots of it, very exciting jobs. But perhaps even more so the, the cell and gene therapy area and, and Gary mentioned the MSC that specifically we've created to, to, to allow for this. So it's a, it's a time when there is a huge number of opportunities. Which areas will be the most successful? Um, I, I wouldn't like to venture to guess. It's, you know, that's, I guess that's um, you know, what the venture capitalists and, and people looking at this area um, that Gary mentioned before are, are trying to predict. Um, but there are certainly many, uh, many opportunities that the, at this point in time, uh, as you know, these the ways we look to exploit biology um, grow and grow. Yeah, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I you know I haven't been doing this for too long, but uh, some of the um, current MSc in biochemical engineering students they have been asking me this question um, in the past. What was the preferred route? But I think you're right. I think it, it very much depends on the cohort. It very much depends on what is available in terms of jobs. Um, and uh, there are new emerging areas like the cultivated meat space that you, you've mentioned as well that is, is hiring quite a lot now, or at least in the past uh, couple of years, uh, the number of jobs that they are providing has, has increased quite a bit. So I think it, that does influence uh, yeah. what happens. Next I, but I think one's got to look at one's career in, in the long term. You know, yeah. What is your vision? Do you want to manage a research group? Well, in that case, yes, you probably need a PhD, uh, whether it be in a university or within a, a, a manufacturing commercial setting. Uh, but if you want to uh, you know, look at supply chain management, well, no, the, the case is, is, is much less clear that, uh, you know, and you want to replicate um, Mark Proctor's um, progress, then, then that may not be uh, the best route for you. So I think it's about you know, looking at, I don't think it, it's good to sort of necessarily, um, you've got to be clear about you know, what you're inspired to do and what, what mm. it's going to drive you for in, in your career and then make decisions accordingly, I think. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, so there have been a few questions coming through, and I see some of them have been answered by Gary and Darren. Thank you so much. Um, there is one here, which I think it's it, it's applicable to all of us <laughs> uh, sitting here as we are all involved in research. Um, could you give a brief overview of some of the research work being done in the department, perhaps the type of projects that MSc and a PhD student might be involved in? And I think this is a really, really good one. So thank you so much, whoever posted this. <laughs> I think this opens a, a new, um, a, a new uh, discussion uh, completely entirely uh, because very similarly to, you know, to the roles of biochemical engineers, I think the type of research that we do in the department spans across a lot of disciplines um, and very complex applications. Um, so perhaps we can start with you, Gary, um, even though you, you, your list is probably the longest of, <laughs> of all of us. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I was just trying to find the link to the research page of the website, which um, gives a sort of very brief overview. But um, I, I think that the starting point is, is to recognise that, that, that UCL is a sort of research in, intensive university and it is always one of the top 10 um, research universities in the world. Um, the I think the, the key thing is that uh, educationally, we, we have a strategy called UCL 2034, which makes a very close link between the research that we do and the education that we provide to our students on all the different programmes. And one of the pillar, one of the cornerstones of this is that your, your research, uh, your, your education should be very much research led and research based. So what we're hoping to achieve, obviously, then, is the graduates going out from UCL 
have a very up-to-date understanding of the latest research developments in their particular field, whether they're doing biochemical engineering, whether they're doing physics, or whether they're doing chemistry. Um, within the department, um, our research is broken down into three areas, and that, that's what is described on the, the departmental research page at very high level. Um, one of those areas is called industrial biotechnology. Um, so this is very much around um, the whole issue of sustainability. How do we use sustainable raw materials, typically agricultural sort of waste streams, and how we can use things like synthetic biology to engineer cells or enzymes that can take those renewable resources and can convert them into pharmaceuticals, into uh, fuels, things like biofuels, or sort of advanced materials. So that's, that's one area of research. The other area of research um, is very much around um, biological uh, therapeutics. So things like therapeutic antibodies, things like vaccines, which we've already discussed, um, and all the technologies to, to engineer and make what are really complex biological medicines. And then the third area uh, is around the sort of stem cell and gene therapy uh, ideas, where we're looking at things like um, the latest sort of CAR T technologies as, as for anti cancer, for, for cancer therapies, and also sort of tissue engineering. So those are the sort of three main areas that we're, we're active within the department. And the latest research of those is what we use to illustrate the fundamentals that we teach in our, our lectures. And when there are sort of research uh, projects uh, within the degree programs, then the master students or undergraduate students are really, they, they pick a project and they're embedded into the ongoing research teams within those areas. So going right back to what I said at the beginning, um, one of the features of our educational approach at UCL is that there's a very strong link between the cutting edge research that we do uh, and the delivery of our educational programs. Okay, thank you so much, Gary. Um, I think that summarizes very nicely um, the type of research that we do. Um, so um, there are a few additional questions in the chat as well. Um, oh, where is it? Okay, sorry, one disappeared. Um, is there an opportunity to do work in industry during any of the programs? Um, so I guess back to you, Gary, on that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so at the, the, the master's level, um, you know, they're quite short focused programs for one year. Um, so the way that we have them structured at the minute is that there's no formal um, process for industry experience during the course of the, the program. That said, um, we have a lot of industry collaborations from our research. Um, and we have um, industrial advisory board, um, both for the department and for some of our programs that have a very strong input to the design of the curricula uh, and also into actually the delivery of the material as well. So something like on our master's programs, we typically have something like 70 industrial experts come in to the department every year. Um, and help us deliver those courses. So, um, you know, the, the students on the programme, they get the, the theory from Petra, myself, Darren and Dan, uh, and other colleagues, um, and then they, they hear from people who are then actually applying that in industry um, about how it's relevant, but also what it can be applied um, to do. Sometimes some of the research projects that we set up are collaborative with industry, uh, but that depends very much on particular research that we're doing at a time, but it's not something that we, we guarantee to have uh, uh, on, on every programme every year. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, this is um, not necessarily for the, for the masters, but I think it does, uh, you know, it does um, bring the point on the, um, highlight the point on um, how we work um, 
how our our research is basically and our, the way we teach our programs as well is informed by the needs of industry. Um, I mean, we do we do. Uh, well, this week, actually, just as an example, <laughs> we've been running a uh, scenario week um, and the students actually got to uh, have mentors from various startup companies um, that were within the theme of that week. So we, we do occasionally bring aboard um, people from industry uh, to for, for various uh, types of activities as well. Um, right, so... Um, I think we've already answered this. Um, Gary, you're typing in an answer <laughs> now for would your application be at a disadvantage if you do not have experience in industry during your undergraduate program? I, I would be inclined to say the answer to that is no, uh, right? I, I guess um, it, it, it is advantageous uh, and it would be um, to have that in, uh, experience, but I don't think that is some that is one of the main requirements for admissions, at least not on the MSc in biochemical engineering. We do say that we encourage um, applicants that have um, experience of working in the industry, but is not necessarily a must. Yeah. Um, and then is there any difference between the MSc and the MRes? Um, back to you, Gary, or maybe Darren, you would like to talk as, uh, to answer so, so that I, one. <laughs> I start and then Darren, Darren picks up. Um, I, th I think there are the, 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 um, they offer different types of, of skills. So um, the uh, MSc is um, effectively a taught program. Um, so it's 180 credits, um, and about 60 of those credits are a research um, and a, either a research or a design project. Um, so the majority of the credits are very much focused on the educational content uh, and whether that's more from the life science or the, the engineering side, depending on which stream you're on. The MRES program is, is slightly different given by its name. As you can imagine, it's a master's of research, so it has a much stronger research component. So again, it's a master's program, so it has 180 credits, uh, but I think 120 of those um, are focused on the research project. So you, it's, it's sort of twice as much time in the laboratory compared to the uh, MSc programs. Um, so, uh, all the programs have a research element. Um, but Darren, do you want to pick up and say a little bit about the types of, of research that the, the students on the MRES program follow? I think you're muted, Darren. You're muted, yeah. Darren. So, so, yeah, so the, the, the MRES has got a very broad um, range of projects. Um, so it spans our department of biochemical engineering in terms of the uh, principal investigators, but also beyond that into the broad, uh, the, there are projects offered from groups uh, across uh, UCL. So all, all, all the synthetic biology community of UCL uh, offers projects for this um, MRES program. And that's to be expected um, as it's an interdisciplinary um, subject area with, um, PIs from, from several different departments all being involved in, this, in the synthetic biology community. And the range is so broad that it's hard to, to capture, but I, <laughs> I could summarize and say, you could be doing metabolic engineering in a microbe like a yeast to make a drug, drug compounds that are currently made chemically, uh, and now made in yeast. Um, the, the, I'm sure, those of you interested in that will see that there's a new announcement probably every six months about a drug that was previously made through other means that is now being made in yeast um, all of the, some of those medicinal and so on um uh, there are some projects that are have a large mathematical modeling element to those that are available for students that have an interest in that area and so there are projects that support that and there are projects more towards, let's say, um, their cell therapies also in, in, in that space and, and literally everything in between. So, so generally in the classic areas of synthetic biology would be genetic modification and also integrating traditional 
elements of biology into engineering frameworks. And the aim of that ultimately is to make the cells involved in a process behave more predictably. So the, the cells are as predictable as the bioreactors and the chromatography columns and the filtration columns. That, that's the, the ultimate aim. And, and they can be modeled digitally and so on and so forth. And so and that's very much a cross-cutting concept. So therefore the projects are very broad as a result. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Gary. Thank you so much, Dan. Oh, sorry, you haven't finished. <laughs> no, I think Dan's got his. Ah, his yes, job. I was about to say, Dan, would you like to say you have your hand up? Yeah, I, I just maybe sometimes it's it's useful to think of the, uh, particularly the MSc in biochemical engineering, as uh, designed for two sorts of uh, uh, entrants. We have the option for the traditionally chemical engineers, but it may, may be other forms of engineering as well, who um, are very interested in the sector, want to move into the sector, but realize, okay, well, I don't have the biological skills and I, and I need to, to, and then vice versa. We have a form of the MSc uh, for those not from the life sciences um, who realize they don't have the process engineering skills. Um, and so we're, uh, we're focused on, on, on providing that to them. Um, this incidentally is uh, following the Institute of Chemical Engineers accreditation procedures and that being designed to get them to the point uh, where they have that, that, that gap in their knowledge that, that needs to be filled to, to progress into the sort of careers we've been discussing um, and um, be prepared for that. So yeah, just, just useful to sometimes think of, you know, your background and, and what we're trying to achieve in those degrees. And as Gary says, they're largely taught and it's for the, those without a, uh, any experience of the engineering side would be going to the design projects because that's the element that they need to understand more about in, in order to progress their careers and vice versa. Um, those coming from a chemical engineering background have usually not had any experience of research and we will be pushing those, the 60 credits Gary mentioned, um, would be, would be taking those to again upskill um, and prepare you for uh, the sector. Okay, thank you so much, Dan. Um, those were all very good points as well. So hopefully they have shed a bit more, <laughs> more light on um, on um, our program. Um, so um, we were also planning to watch the uh, iChemy video, but we don't have um, much time left now. So Kim has very kindly uh, posted the um, link for the iChemy video um, with our uh, with the contribution of our um, alumni um, in fighting the pandemic in the chat. So if you would like to watch that, it's only about five minutes long, but it's very, very informative. Um, so if you do have the time, um, def definitely uh, watch it. Um, so uh, we only have a few more minutes left. If you could post your final questions in the chat, otherwise, um, we would like to thank you so much for joining us and remind you of the upcoming um, um, upcoming events for uh, the individual um, individual uh, MSc programs. So the on 15th of February, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, is the webinar on synthetic biology um, and res with Professor John Wood and Darren here. Then uh, on 3rd of March um, is the manufacturing and commercialization of stem cell uh, gene um, and uh, stem cells and gene therapy um, MSCs, um, and that will be run by Dr. Kasim Rafik. Um, and then on 10th of March, there will be a, a Q&A on the MSc in Biochemical Engineering with myself and Professor Dan Bracewell. Um, so feel free to, to join on all of those. I think Kim has also posted the links and you can sign up on the website uh, for all of these. Um, Kim, is there anything else from your side um, to finish? No, no um... I uh, just want to say that, I mean, there's quite a lot of stuff that's appeared in the chat uh, and I know probably won't be able to have a chance to take a note of it. But one thing, if you, I think most people have signed up through the UCL form, so you'll have an email from UCL directly to join this webinar. 
it means that you'll get invitations to the webinars that are coming up um, mm -hmm. all the events that we're doing so as long as you've registered with UCL you'll, you'll you'll find out about these events also they're all on the front page of our website so the the webinars that we've got coming up with with, with Dan with Petra with, with, with Darren um, with Kasim they're on there as well so you can register for those I also want to plug something we've got coming up in the next few months which is our spring into stem lectures um, and it's we, we always we always choose some some uh, some core subjects that we always talk about so we talk about vaccine manufacture or vaccines um, stem cell and gene therapy but we've also we also talked about the research activities we've got taking place this year we're, we're doing some uh, work on biocatalysis uh, with Jack Jeffries and we've got two sessions on uh, lab grown uh, lab grown food not only is Petra taking one session but we've also got one of our uh, alumni who will be joining from Hoxton Farms so we've got two we've got a really um, we've got a really exciting uh, series of events coming up over there so if you're registered with us we'll keep you informed about those um, and I really look forward to seeing you then is that Akin hello or is that Akin or James no no it's from hoxton farms oh <laughs> that's that's um matilda matilda, matilda. Ah, so we've got so many to choose from i know we do i know we do but it's but it's 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 great to be able to talk about uh, you know what we do here and then what our alumni go on to do and, and and actually talk to them where they're working um it's 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 very exciting for us as well because we get to see inside what they're doing so so um you know we, we enjoy doing these things but we really hope you'll be able to join us for that um so if there, are there any other questions that have come in? I don't think we've had any more. If anything comes up in the meantime as well, you should have had my email address. I'm more than happy to put you in contact with the people around the department if there's anything else that we haven't covered. And if anybody wants to talk about any um, our PhD or NGD programs, if you want to get in touch with any of the academics individually, please get in touch with me and I'll be more than happy to put you in touch. Like I said, this event has been recorded. It will be available on YouTube afterwards, so I'll share that link. Um, so I think all it is that we've got to do is to thank thank everyone who who uh, who's taken part to Petra, Dan, Darren, Gary. Thank you very much. It's been great to have you here. And most of all, thank you for joining us today. It's been great to have you with us. And thank you for your questions. They've been fantastic. Um, so have a great day. And I hope we get to see you in person at UCL before too long. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you.